Okay guys, welcome to our new normal. So I'm going to pick up in our chapter 10 lecture at about slide 48. Um, and we're going to talk today about what is an action potential and how is it generated and how does it affect the muscle. Okay, so you may not be able to see me the whole time. You're going to see my arm. You might see the back of my head. But I try to focus my camera here on my computer screen so you can see the PowerPoint. And I'm going to do some drawing on the whiteboard. Okay, so again, if you're following along with our PowerPoint, we're on about slide 48 where we left off right before spring break and the craziness that has since ensued. Okay, so excitable membranes. All cell membranes are able to be excited, and that means that they can respond to electrical stimuli. Now, we talked about this a little bit when we talked about the cell, so I'm going to draw over here. So here's our good old friend, the cell, and we talked about that magical thing called the sodium-potassium pump. And what that thing does is it pushes out three positive sodiums for every two positive potassiums it brings in. And every time it cranks, it's going to use up an ATP. Well, we do this so that we have lots and lots of sodium here outside of the cell. And we have lots and lots of potassium inside of the cell. But overall, if you push out three positive charges, and only let two positive charges back in, overall the inside of the cell is very quickly going to become negative. Now it's slightly negative, but it's going to stay negative. And that means out here where we have all these extra sodiums is going to be slightly positive. So right here is part of the key of this story. So whenever you have a positive set of charges and a negative set of charges separated by a barrier, we have a potential here. We have an electrical potential. Okay, so let's just, for, for fun, let's just say, what would happen if we were to open up a door right now here in the cell, open up a channel for sodium? Hopefully you know that by the law of diffusion, since there's a lot of sodium out here, and there's not much inside, that the sodium would very quickly pour in through the channel as quickly as it could because it's concentrated out here, so higher concentration outside and lower concentration inside. Also, it's a positive charge, and I just told you the inside of the cell is negative. So the sodium is going to come in very quickly because it has two reasons to get in, concentration gradient and electrical pull. Okay, so if we know if we open up a sodium channel, sodium is going to rush in. If all of these positive charges come in, what happens to our negative charge on the inside? Well, eventually if enough sodiums come in, it gets switched to a positive. And out here where the sodiums just left is going to be a negative. Now notice right now we're not letting the potassium move. So whenever you switch your charges between a barrier, you create an electrical current. And electrical currents can be passed, okay? So this is kind of a background setup for excitable membranes. So we're going to deal with two cells with excitable membranes in our story, the neuron and the skeletal muscle cell. So let's talk a little bit more about some channels. Back in chapter three, when we were talking about different ways of getting things into and out of the cell, we talked about channels. And we had gated channels and not gated channels. And my gated channels, which of course means they have ability to be closed, came in three kinds. We had something that's called chemically gated. And sometimes that chemical is called a ligand. Some people say ligand, some people say ligand, I say ligand, okay? That's one thing. So what's going to open and close that channel is when the right chemical or molecule that fits the shape on the outside of the receptor, when it is bound, it will open the channel. Okay? That's one type. The second type of channel is called a voltage gated channel. And of course, what is it going to respond to? But changes in voltage or electrical current. You might start to put the pieces together now. The third type of gated channel is called a mechanically gated channel. And we are not going to touch on these today. 
We're going to learn more about mechanically gated channels when we get into anatomy two and start talking about your special senses. That'll be our first real exposure to mechanically gated. But that means that we are going to talk about the chemically gated and the voltage gated in our voluntary muscle contraction story. Okay, so where will we find these? Well, we're going to back up a little bit more even. Since we're talking about voluntary muscle, we're talking about being able to control when the muscle contracts with a thought. So your thoughts originate in your brain and they are going to travel as electrical currents. Now, the special word we're going to use for that electrical current is an action potential. And right now, just knowing that term is good enough. So our nervous tissue in our brain is made of neurons. And here's our neuron cell body. And remember, it has one long piece for sending away from the neuron cell body, and this was called the axon. And then it goes all the way down to the end of the axon, and it would split into lots of these, but we're just gonna draw one for simplicity. And it has a flattened disc at the end, which would be much smaller than the cell body. Pardon my proportional problems here. But this is called the synaptic terminal. And this little flattened area is called the terminal bouton. Okay, so this is the end of the neuron. And what happens is, I'm gonna change color markers here for a minute, is we're going to have this kind of hovering over the surface of the voluntary muscle cell. So the red represents the sarcolemma. Remember, sarcolemma is just the membrane on the outside of a skeletal muscle cell. Now notice I had to go down here and I had it wiggle up and down. So this side is the neural side, the nerve, and this side is the muscular side. And so this area in here is called the NMJ, or neuromuscular junction. It's where nerve communicates with muscle. And this little roughly edge down here goes up and down. This is called the motor end plate. This is the area in the neuromuscular junction that is on the muscular side. Now, in the membrane, in the motor end plate, we're going to have some channels, okay? But we're, before we get there, let's go back up to the axon. We're also going to have channels here. Okay, so we're going to start out by thinking about moving a muscle. And so we're going to generate a little electrical current called an action potential. I'll kind of represent that as a little lightning bolt and it gets passed down the axon. Now, when that little electrical current gets down near the bottom of the axon, it's gonna open a channel right here. Now, these are ion channels, and this one happens to be a voltage-gated channel for a particular ion. It's an ion we've talked about before. It is calcium. Okay. So when the electrical current gets down here and passes over this gate, the change in the voltage is going to open the gate. That means that now calcium can go into the end of the nerve, into the end of the axon of the neuron. Now, we have a problem trying to get electrical current from the neuron over to the muscle cell. It's this space in here. Now, it's a microscopic space, but it might as well be the Grand Canyon because electricity can't jump it. The name of the space, since the area where a neuron interacts with any other cell is called a synapse, that's why this is called the synaptic terminal. This space is called the synaptic cleft. I'm gonna write it up here, sorry, I have to reach kind of far. Cleft, C-L-E-F-T, it just means a gap, okay. So we have a problem. We have electrical current that wants to tell the muscle cell what to do, but it gets down to the end of the neuron and we have this grand canyon of space and it can't get across. So we have to do a quick switcheroo. We have to change our signal from a, an electrical current into a chemical signal that can cross this gap. Okay, so remember we had voltage gated channels and we have something called ligand gated channels or chemical gated channels. And so over here on the motor end plate are our ligand gated channels. Here and here and here and here. Okay, so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna convert the signal from electricity to chemical, but then when we get back in the muscle cell, we need it to be electricity again. 
Okay, I know it sounds complicated, but it's actually kind of magical. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a chemical stored in the end of the terminal in these little bubbles like this. Okay, and the name of the chemical, let me erase some stuff so I have room because this one is long, is, are you ready? Acetylcholine. We're going to abbreviate it A-C-H. So acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. That means it's a chemical that the nervous system is going to use to cross over this gap, the synaptic cleft. So what we do is when the action potential, the little electrical current gets down to the bottom of the neuron on the axon, it opens a voltage gated channel for calcium to come in. The calcium tells the end of the neuron to release the acetylcholine that's in these little bubbles into the space, the synaptic cleft, okay? Now, the acetylcholine comes over here and it binds to its spot on this channel and opens this channel. These are ligand-gated channels. And what are they ligand-gated channels for? For sodium. Remember the sodium-potassium pump pushed a whole bunch of sodium outside of the cell. It even works on a muscle cell. So there's a lot of sodium hanging out in that synaptic cleft. So when the acetylcholine, the little chemical, comes out of the neuron and is able to cross the gap and binds to the channel, when it is bound, the channel opens for sodium. Sodium will then come into the muscle cell, and when we have sodium rushing into the cell, it's going to make the inside of the cell positive, and we're going to create a new electrical current in the muscle cell. We're gonna call it an action potential, okay? So in that little process, we are able to go from an electrical current to a very brief chemical signal that can cross the gap and then create a new electrical current on the muscle cell side in the motor end plate. And now this new electrical current, I'll draw my little lightning bolt, is gonna travel down the surface of the muscle cell and anywhere there's a T-tubule, it's gonna go down inside. Hopefully you're starting to put the story together. So let's review this one more time, and then I'm gonna tell the whole story in another video. So, you think you want to move a muscle, so you send a small electrical current called an action potential down the axon. It gets to the bottom of the axon where it opens a voltage-gated calcium channel. Calcium that is outside of the neuron comes into the neuron and causes the neuron to release a chemical that it's holding in vesicles. The chemical is called acetylcholine. The acetylcholine goes into the space between the neuron and the muscle cell called the synaptic cleft. And it travels across the cleft and then it binds to receptors on ligand gated sodium channels. It's the ligand. When it binds to the sodium channel, the sodium channel opens. And because the sodium potassium pump has been pushing lots of sodium out, there's lots of sodium in here ready to come in. When the sodium comes rushing in, it flips the charge of the muscle cell from negative inside to positive, right here. And we're gonna create a new electrical current or action potential that's gonna now go down the side of the cell and go down to the T-tubules. All right, I think that's long enough for this video. I'll start up with this part of the story in the next video.